Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen, I was about to go to bed, but uh, there's a couple things you need to know. The financial world is imploding. Welcome to 2024. Categorized by extreme AI euphoria, Japan becoming the area in which people were most bullish on, according to Forbes, Barron, CNBC, and really just everyone you talk to. Look, Just look at Japan's stock market. It went up to the right for um, about a year now. And it's now the reason the financial system is imploding. As we speak, the NASDAQ is down almost 6%. Welcome to 2024. There's some things you need to know. The reason I'm making this video so late that hopefully will help you profit from this situation. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. Okay, Tesla is down 14% right now. Coinbase is down 20%. Bitcoin is falling off a cliff. Ethereum's down 20%. It is bloody like, I have not seen it this bad since the Rony Rona crash, okay? The Fed is going to be cutting rates probably by about 1% within the next 48 hours, okay? There's rumors of a Fed meeting taking place in just the next couple of hours to discuss how to handle this situation. Now, what is causing the situation is, as I mentioned, Japan, it's this carryover trade. It says investors, including retail Japanese investors, everyone. If retail's doing it, everyone's doing it, okay? The banks, the government, literally everyone, okay? It says including retail Japanese investors borrow at a low interest rate at home and purchased assets in other countries with higher returns, such as overseas equities, and bonds. Dun, 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 dun. So that's what happens when you have the third largest economy in the world that has over 300% debt to GDP that goes out and purchases foreign securities and bonds for that matter. It was destined we were going to get this implosion that is happening. Like this is a financial meltdown. This is an implosion. And the Fed will be forced to react to this because, unfortunately, um, there can be a lot more pain and carnage to come if the Fed does not. Now, I know some of you, some of you guys are going to say, why would the Fed react? Like, it's not their problem. Japan's blowing up the financial system. Well, it is, okay? Because when you have major events like this with meltdowns in global markets, which let's be honest, let's call it for what it is. This is a meltdown in global markets, especially seemingly for no reason. A couple things you need to know. There is a reason, okay? Someone or many someones are getting liquidated. They're getting blown up. They're going bankrupt, okay? Um, we don't know who this is who's causing this, but someone is getting blown up, okay? So that's number one. The damage under the surface is actually far more than perhaps what it looks like, okay? And not too often do you see that, number one, another thought there. But number two, the reason why the Fed has to react to this um, before September, they have to react to this as soon as possible, is because this jeopardizes, obviously, the soft landing. But again, when you see crashes like this, meltdowns, these events, generally speaking, put you into a recession. So if, if you were considering this economy as maybe weakening, not as strong as it used to be, maybe one bad catalyst away from a recession, the, the catalyst is here. I mean, like, this is the catalyst for a recession. Um, obviously, inflation, things are slowing down regardless. But this could be the the defining moment that we look back and say, yeah, this was the start of a recession if, you know, we don't 
already think we're in a recession and that's really you know up for everyone everyone's personal opinions but this situation is not going to get better because why you have this carry trade happening in japan that is just i mean in and of itself destroying financial markets globally i think it's rightfully so to say this is a financial meltdown but also you're going to have investors here in the U.S. that start to get margin called. You're going to have investors that start to panic and hit the sell button. And this, it's going to be hard to stop without the Fed intervening. The Fed's going to have to come out and backstop everything because let's be honest here, okay? Inflation, call it 2.5%, it's more like 2.7%, but for simple math sakes here, say inflation's 2.5%, say the federal funds rate's five and a half percent that means the fed could actually cut by two and a half percent just to get to neutral so the fed needs to make a statement here um by their actions and cut rates in a meaningful way they're not going to come out and do a 50 basis point cut they're going to come out and do a one to two percent cut uh, depending on how bad this is. And yes, you're going to stoke some panic, some fear, and there's going to be more selling if the Fed comes out and, you know, does a large rate cut, right? There's obviously, obviously going to be, you know, some concerns there. But what's, what's the, what's the, I guess, the worst part if, if the Fed does nothing, then you just risk a deep, hard recession okay carl over on x is sharing this from about three minutes ago now he says the fed will not want to admit an error or risk causing panic by cutting fed funds before its next scheduled meeting in september so life looks likely to be tough for a while the concern should be whether such a sudden downdraft will create leverage losses that could cause a cascade we're already there okay um yeah, the Fed doesn't want to come out and cut rates. That's not their preferred scenario. But financial meltdown or cut rates in a material way, still be restrictive, by the way, cut rates in, in a material way and backstop the markets a little bit. Which one do you think Powell wants more on his, on his legacy? The guy that stopped the shit hitting the fan or the guy that let shit hit the fan for a month and then caused a deep recession and then cut rates to zero and potentially risks inflation returning if it is a short-lived recession. I mean, this this is a no-brainer, guys. The Fed is about to cut rates in a very substantial way. So FX Evolution over on X says, I'm hearing rumors of an emergency Fed meeting today to discuss rate cuts anyone actually confirming this information and yes the fed is going to be meeting today in a couple of hours regardless of whether rates actually get cut or not in my opinion by uh probably after the markets close i doubt the fed's going to want to come out and cut rates during the markets or while the markets are open, but that's always a possibility. But probably by the time the trading day is over with for Monday, you're going to have the Fed coming out, cutting rates. Again, it's possible this could happen in with within hours, right? But that would just be my speculation. The last time the Fed did emergency cuts was on a Sunday, right before, which I, I guess I shouldn't say right before, but... Um, the Sunday of like March 12th, I believe, um, like right before shit started to hit the fan in the markets, like the Fed caused the markets to crash from the Rony Rona when everything was shut down, but they didn't have a choice. OK, but they did do that uh, emergency cut when the markets were not open. So we don't have a lot of historical recent precedents on emergency rate cuts, but the last one we had, they did it when markets were closed probably to give investors time to kind of digest that information um because i mean if 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 you let that information out when markets are open and people can just sell in and out of their entire portfolio based on that information then clearly that 
potentially could create a little bit more selling than maybe you would see if if they did that overnight for an example in fact the worst day for japan's stock market since black monday of 1987 japan's stock market is down over 12 and a half percent today so again this will be something the fed is going to react to now how do we react to this to profit from it and yes i know tesla's tesla's 180 dollars stock again like you blink you take the weekend off <laughs> and tesla's down 40 50 dollars per share here's the game plan okay from my perspective what i'm going to be doing obviously i'm going to follow the trend i'm going to watch markets um, coming when they open here in just the next couple of hours i think there is a lot of potential for a downside trade if the fed when the fed i should say comes out and actually cuts rates in a material way it depends how they cut rates okay if the Fed comes out and cuts rates, let's say 1%, yeah, that might help a little bit, but it's it's just not enough, right? You really need to crush that carry trade and make it Japan's issue and not our issue or, or a larger issue for us. And also to really kind of uh, send a signal to the markets that you're going to support the markets. If the Fed comes out and just cuts rates and that's it, then I think there's going to be a lot more selling historically what what causes you know major crashes to end like roni rona 08 com bubble is when the fed actually comes out and says we will stop at nothing to backstop this market so i don't know if we get the cut and the backstop in the next 48 hours or if we just get the cut if we just get the cut there's going to be a lot more downside if the fed actually comes out and backstops markets says like they did in 2020 they will actually go out and buy stocks they need to then you're gonna see a, a a sharp reversal now we're still sitting close to all-time highs so i think there's a lot of room still for a downside trade although premiums are going to be insane when you wake up um i i think you probably want to wait for a little bit of a bounce not financial advice to get into any downside trades if that's what you wanted to do you want to be nimble in this environment. You want to, if you make you know, profits on trades, ride the profits. Don't ride your initial investment. Because why? Cash is king. When you're about to experience discounts that you have not seen in years for some of your favorite companies, you want to have as much cash as possible to be able to go shopping. Now, I think there can be materially more downside another 10 15 20 percent from here is possible um, if the markets do not exactly like the fed cut and especially in that scenario you want to have as much cash available available to you as possible and i think there also will be a pretty attractive again downside trade on this market um, if you guys want to come join the trading community, check out that link down below in the description of this video. Yeah, we're going to be busy tomorrow. Um, that's for sure. There's, there's going to be a lot of things going on. But cash is king. That's the bottom line. I would rather sit in cash and not make any trades here and just wait for um, the, the sweet deals that we are about to get. And we're about to get them because the financial system is imploding and there's no other way to put it so let me know what you think about this situation down below in the comment section this is one of those times where you need the fed to, to really grow a pair and, and step in and stop things or it's gonna get way way worse and i mean make sure your your job's a secure one because these are events that normally lead to recessions so Hopefully this is not too doom and gloomy for you. Hopefully you see the positive in this. Um, lots of potential to make a lot of money in potentially a short amount of time. Um, and honestly, it happened a lot faster than I thought. I thought it was going to take a little bit more time um, before things imploded. But I guess it, you know, you, you, you can't fight it.
Things just happen sometimes. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day and or night, depending on where you're watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.